I found a diary tucked in a brick at an abandoned psych hospital. I grew up on Long Island, right outside the Kings Park Psychiatric Center, home of the legend of Cropsey. I was always a good kid, never broke any rules, never really pushed the limits of what was and wasn't allowed. But recently, I moved home after graduating from college and just started looking for a job in NYC. Throughout my college years, I struggled with anxiety and depression, which led to me being medicated to control it. Through this entire ordeal, all I could think about was the poor children of Kings Park and what they must have gone through. Some of them just had anxiety, a common ailment in today's society, and one that's completely manageable. And yet, they were stuffed inside an insane asylum, which was over capacity by a thousand people and treated like animals. This revelation that I got extremely lucky has always been on my mind. If I had been born just a couple of decades earlier and in the same area, who knows what may have happened to me. On the hinges of self-awareness, I decided to break the rules for once in my life. I had to visit Kings Park and see what it was like for myself. For those of you who don't live in the New York area, Kings Park has a gate around it. It's situated in the middle of a wooded area, but it's not like there's guards and an electric fence or anything. It's private property, so you're not supposed to trespass, but I can't say that almost my entire high school didn't go anyway. But I never did. I was always too terrified of the legends, and Cropsey in particular. I'll tell the story of Cropsey quickly because it's relevant to the history, but not really relevant to the story. Cropsey was a legend that popped up in the Long Island area, saying that one of the patients from Kings Park had escaped and was killing people in the woods around the old hospital. Only part of this was true. There was someone killing young and mostly disabled children around the hospital, but it wasn't an escaped patient. It was an old ward of the hospital who was living in tunnels and bunkers underneath the hospital. There's a really great Netflix documentary on the whole story if you're interested. Since the legend of Cropsey turned out to be based on truth, I decided this was something I just didn't want to mess with. Kings Park would just be another broken down building in the area whose memory would pop into my head at weird times. This all changed after college and my diagnosis though. I know I wasn't diagnosed with anything heavy, but I still felt a sense of responsibility or the camaraderie of sort and had to see what they experienced. So one night at around 7.30 p.m. I headed over to Kings Park with a flashlight, a backpack and a water bottle. I figured I wasn't going to need anything else, but I did have a small hunting knife with me in my pocket, just in case. I got to the broken down foundations of the psychiatric hospital that tortured so many innocent children and I couldn't find the strength to do anything more than stare up at the walls. This thing is truly massive. If you haven't seen it, it's got about 15 floors and it just goes straight up. I decided I had to push myself into the uncomfortable and I found a window on the ground floor that was open and climbed in. I will say in hindsight that it was stupid of me to go alone, but I had to do this for myself. It was something that I was conquering. Or so, I thought in my head. As I wandered aimlessly around the corridors, looking at all the graffiti on the walls, seeing the broken down bed frames with rusted metal and fingernail claw marks on what's left of the doors, I got real chills. For some reason, I felt particularly drawn to the third floor. I really can't explain what it was, but my feet just moved on their own towards this one spot on the third floor of the abandoned hospital. There really wasn't anything special about it. It was just a hallway outside of a couple rooms, near a communal bathroom. But since I was there, I looked around. I smelled the stale musk of the abandoned building and scanned the exposed brick with my eyes. As I was looking through the shattered drywall to the exposed brick beyond, I caught a glimpse of a spot that was just slightly darker than the rest of the brick and mortar. Intrigued, I moved closer and shined my flashlight right onto the dark spot. With a little poking, prodding, and removal of even more drywall, I was able to fish it free. A small, string-bound diary, made entirely out of loose-leaf paper. There wasn't a cover, so to speak, so it was able to be folded up nice and neatly and tucked away into an empty brick space behind the wall. My curiosity was thoroughly piqued, but I wasn't dumb enough to start reading right then and there. It was dark, and I was still inside of a supposedly haunted asylum. I took one last look around the place, made peace with myself and the patients of the building, and went home. As soon as I got home, I took a shower to rinse off whatever was left of King's Park. I opened up my backpack to retrieve the diary. It seems to be the diary of a young girl who was put into the hospital back when it was in operation. I figured I'd write down the first entry here, and I'll share the remainder in the next couple days. April 24th, 1918 is my first day here. Mama told me to keep track of the days and who I am so I don't forget. 
I am Florence Blackwell and I am 10. Mama and Daddy made me come to the hospital to get better. They said I was sick and that's why I went to bed at night. Daddy said that once I get better, the other girls in 10 will want to play with me. Mama was sad when she dropped me off. She had tears in her eyes like she was going to cry, but I told her, don't be sad, Mama, I'm going to get better for you. And the nice lady in the nurse hat took me inside of the hospital while Mama cried from the outside. I don't know why Mama was so upset. Daddy was happy to see me go to the hospital to get better. The lady who took me inside of the hospital said her name was Nurse Wilson, but that I can call her Mary. Mama and Daddy always told me to never call an adult by their real names, but I think I can call her Mary. She's nice to me, not like that doctor. I don't remember his name, but that doctor was not nice. Mary brought me into a big white room in the hospital and asked me to take off all my clothes so I can put on a big white gown and the doctor can take a look at me. Mary helped me out of my dress that Mama made me and stand in the middle of the white room with a vent on the floor. Then Mary left and the doctor man came in. Or at least I think he was a doctor. He told me to stand with my arms out just like a starfish and to close my eyes and hold my breath. Then he took out a giant hose and sprayed the water directly at me. I fell backwards onto the floor from how heavy the water was. He didn't stop the hose though. He kept spraying me with the heavy water on the floor of the tiled room and he didn't stop until I was crying and crying and shivering from the cold water. The doctor man stopped the hose and told me to get up. He put a white gown on the floor in the puddles of water and told me to wear it. I put on the gown and Mary came back in. I cried to her and she just pet my head and let me cry. Mary brought me to my room where I'm going to get better in the hospital. It has one bed and there were two other girls in the room already. They were both sleeping when I walked in so I didn't get to say hi to them. But Mary slipped me back my little diary and told me to hide it so the doctor cannot find it again. I was so tired I fell asleep next to the two other girls but I didn't sleep for long. In the middle of the night, I opened my eyes to see one of the other girls about three inches from my face just staring at me while I was sleeping. She looked at me with really big eyes and a big smile on her face, and when she saw me looking at her, she turned her head to the right like a puppy and said, It's time. When she said that, someone in the hallway screamed like their daddy was hitting them with a belt. They screamed and screamed, and then someone else screamed too, and then the entire floor of kids were all screaming as loud as they could. I don't know how I'm supposed to get better when all these kids scream in the night. I hope they aren't hurt, but I also need to get better so I can go home to Mama. Mama said to write every day and remember who I am, so that's what I will do.